confidence in personal hygiene. Um, I'm going to talk <clears throat> about this from the, the point of view as someone in the early stages um, to start with, and then we'll go on to the, the later stages. Right, thanks, Phil. So incontinence is the inability to control the excretion of urine and or the contents of your bowel. It can be caused by the effect of prion disease on the brain itself. However, I think it's really important to always eliminate other causes um, such as urinary tract inf infections, constipation, and the side effects of medication, particularly in the early stages of this condition. Um, which we'll talk a little bit about in, um, in the next couple of slides. It can also be caused by the inability to use the toilet due to other causes such as um, poor mobility, lack of access to the toilet, um, and poor understanding of how to use the toilet and an in inability to ask for help, which we've covered a little bit in um, the previous slides. So some of the strategies are, one of the main things I think, if, as we touched on earlier, is a referral to the occupational therapist. Um, and if we can get the, the occupational therapist involved sooner rather than later, um, she or he can help with some aids, which we'll mention, and the district nurse to assess for ad adaptations, equipment, and continence where that we might be needing in the future. I think we want to be proactive in this rather than reactive. So it's better to have equipment there that you will need in the future than need it tomorrow and not be able to get it until next week. So if we start off with regular toileting, <clears throat> and that what I mean by regular toileting is helping someone to the toilet uh, on regular intervals, um, perhaps maybe two to four hours, all the time and maybe after meal times that can help someone get into a really good routine. If we think someone's going to have constipation, you can manage that by ensuring that they've got a varied diet. Really good hydration is extremely important. And while we can keep them moving and walking if possible, um, it's not always possible, I know that, but if you, we can for as long as possible, that's always a good thing. Keep the route to the toilet clear of obstacles. Um, I know it sounds like a, a little thing, but if you can sit them closest to the door to the toilet, just simple things. Um, adaptations, which you can ask the occupational therapist for, um, are a handrail, a raised toilet seat can help um, with mobility pro problems. A commode can help if the person's unable to get to the toilet. And I've heard that um, the commodes on wheels, um, these glide abouts have been reported as really useful to by the families because they can use them <clears throat> as a commode or they can use them actually as a mobility aid to move the family member around the house. Thanks, Bill. Be alert to non-verbal signs if someone, as I said, can ask to go to the toilet. And these can be simple things like if they start fidgeting their facial expressions, or just wandering around as if they're in search of something. And I'm sure you'll get to know your loved one's um, non-verbal signs that they're needing the toilet. Um, make sure there's a non-slip mat on the floor by the toilet um, and attend to any leakages and spillages on the floor um, just in case they, um, are, they're at risk of slips and falls. Try putting a bright sign on the door of the toilet with words and or pictures often if they, their vision isn't that great or they're they've lost the ability to read things that well it can help them to locate the toilet easily or just leave the door open so that they can see it if it's within their their line of sight what we're looking at is easy strategies at the moment in the early stages so it makes things like going to the toilet a bit easier for them and maybe if they see the toilet it's easier for them to ask for it Sorry, Phil, on you go. Nighttime can be particularly disorientating um, because it's much quieter, it's darker. So motion sensor lights, which come on when they detect movement, for example, in the bedroom, in the hallways, but not too light, too bright, so that they startle the person and scare the living daylights out of them. 
a dimmer switch for low level lighting throughout the, the night. So it's a, a nice low level light. So at the wake up, you don't need to have the motion sensor light. Urinal bottles are available for men and for women, women are surprisingly enough, or a commode in the room. Um, so that you can have it by the bed so that you don't actually have to leave the bedroom. Try and avoid drinks from a, around two hours before bedtime so that they, they're not going to have to get up through the night um, if they don't want to. Caffeinated drinks can make you want to go to the loo. So decaffeinated tea and coffee is fine as they make you want to go to the toilet more, as I just said. If you're going to reduce drinks prior to bedtime, please make sure they're fully hydrated during the day because that can cause issues with hydration and issues with constipation, as I said earlier. But sadly, eventually continence wear will become necessary. And this can be pads and or sometimes a catheter but you can get advice from your occupational therapist and district nurse or specialist continence nurse regarding that. Thanks, Phil. Going on to personal hygiene, again, as I mentioned before, an occupational therapist can assist you with aids and adaptations to make things a lot easier. That could be things like a, a bath or a shower seat um, and handrails for the bathroom always good to stick to a routine. So if they were used to having a shower or a bath, stick to a shower or a bath. If they were used to, um, you know, showering or bathing in the morning, it's always good to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Try and use familiar things that they've always been used to, the same sort of products, such as the same scents, the same makeup, the same deodorants and allow them to do as much for themselves for as long as possible. I know it's a lot easier for you to do things for them because it gets done much quicker. But one, it's, it's difficult for them to have things done to them. Um, it gives them a lot more respect if you let them do things for as long as possible. It retains that ability for them to do things as well if you allow them to do things as long as possible. Um, it's all about being respectful. Try and use, <coughs> excuse me, use loose clothing. Um, that makes it much, much easier for the person to do things themselves. Um, zips and buttons are really too fiddly. Um, and if you are laying out their clothing, try and limit it to two outfits rather than say, what would you like to wear today? It's easier if you say, would you like to wear this one or this one? Um, it's still being respectful. It's still giving someone a choice, but it's limiting those choices. Another challenging thing that families find is managing their expectations. They may no longer sadly be able to have a bath or a shower. Um, simply because of the way the home is, la is laid out <coughs> or the fact that the person can't get in or out of a shower. Um, and we have to facilitate that. It could be that the person then has to graduate into having a strip wash or sadly having a bath in bed. The main thing, as I alluded to earlier, is please don't rush the person. Um, that's really going to make them much more agitated. And if they are going to stiffen up, they will really stiffen up. It makes things much more difficult. Um, and I'll, I'll go on to talk about um, myoclonus and the startle reflex. And actually rushing someone will make this much, much worse, but I'll talk about that later. Thanks, Phil. Finally, continence and personal hygiene are really, really complex. And if you think about the actual process that you yourself take individually about if you miss out one step of the toileting process, so if you miss out, out that one step of actually stopping going to the loo before you pull your pants up, that is an absolute catastrophe. So it only means if you just forget one step for a catastrophe to happen. So just bear that in mind when you are um, doing all those things. Take it slowly. Don't rush things. 
stay safe, contact professionals to get help, whether it's with equipment, adaptations, or carers to help you out. Um, and please don't be afraid to ask for help.